But one of the parallels that I realized was that uh, in, in the Navy, uh, because I had seven captains on four different submarines before I became a captain on my fifth submarine, uh, I had had the chance to observe a, a lot of leadership styles. And I made a very concerted effort before I went to command to define in a written manner what is my leadership style. Most commanding officers of ships have a document that they will just call my command policy. And it's a letter to each crew member that kind of says, this is me. My first captain, when I was a 22 year old ensign, I left the Naval Academy and I drove across country to San Diego to report to my first submarine. And the captain, his name was McDonald also like mine. And we called him Mad Dog, not to his face, um, Big Jack, Mad Dog, McDonald. And he uh, sat me down in his stateroom the day after I got there and gave me this thing called my command policy. And I read it. I didn't. I'm 22 years old, fresh out of the Naval Academy. And I remember reading this line that says, my temper ranges between Irish and unreasonable. I didn't know what it meant, but I wasn't going to ask him. I was too afraid to ask him. I found out two weeks later when I caused a problem on the ship what it meant. And he was in my face screaming, flaming at me. Oh, that's what it means to have a temper between Irish and unreasonable. But I did remember thinking, well, you know what? He told me. He warned me. He gave me a heads up. People like to know what to expect from their leader. So something I did uh, on the ship and in the business world was create my own leadership philosophy. I've heard this called a lot of things. Leader's compass, leadership philosophy, my yeah, command policy. Personal mission statement, I've heard, yeah. And and so what I did in my business as well as on the ship was I wrote a letter to, and it's saying, this is what you can expect from me. These are my standards. These are my idiosyncrasies. These are my absolute, don't violate these. Uh, things like that. And this is what I expect from you. And I think when leaders take the effort to do that, to document their leadership philosophy and expectations and give it to people in written form, I think it clarifies a lot of things. Uh, and particularly, what do you expect from me and what can I expect from you? Yeah, no question about it. And, uh, you know, and coming up through the ranks throughout my military career, there was always the commanding officer's vision. Uh, they would come up with two or three bullets that would hang on the wall. And, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, throughout my career anyway, those weren't reinforced as much as they should have been. If that's a commanding officer's vision, then we all better know it, maybe word for word, and we all really need to get behind it. Um, now, the commanding officer's vision in the military is slightly different than mission, vision, values in the private sector, um, because mission, vision, values in the private sector, some people may choose not to get behind it. Um, hopefully that's not the case, but, um, you, you know, the, meaning the job just might not be a good fit for them overall. And, and they move on much more easily than in a, in a military setting, but I do same thing. So my, my document, and I'll show you, show you a picture of it right here. So I've got oh, like that. my 2022 strategy, mission, vision values. That's mine. That really nice. never changes, but, um, and then we have a motto that I stole from the air force excellence in all we do. And then, uh, but really the pillars of the strategy as, as uh, graphically represented are culture within the organization, focus areas, and then the goals, which are measurable, you know, things that, but um, so mission, vision, values is mine. The rest is built by everybody else in the organization, you know, and, and that stuff can change from time to time. It, it should change from time to time, but philosophically we're on the exact same page. Uh, and I like that. <laughs> 